It's strange to think that GarageBand for Mac has been around for 18 years now. In that time, it's gone through some pretty major changes. From its start as a paid program as part of Apple's iLife bundle, to introducing features like Magic GarageBand and dedicated podcasting templates, to its complete design overhaul in 2014, and subsequent yearly content updates. The GarageBand of today is completely different to the one unveiled by Steve Jobs and a fresh-faced John Mayer on stage back in 2004. 18 years of progress, updates and design tweaks means that GarageBand is the best possible version of itself it could be. Nothing needs to be added or changed, it's perfect. Right? 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 Hello, it's Patrick, and straight away I want to say I bloody love GarageBand. I've been using it for over a decade to create my own music with, and while I have dabbled in other DAWs, I always come back to GarageBand for its straightforward workflow. I strongly believe that there is no better DAW than GarageBand for quickly and easily getting song ideas out of your head and onto your screen. Having said that, it isn't perfect, and look, I'm not going to sit here and moan about how a free DAW is missing features normally found in premium, paid-for programs. I don't think that's especially helpful for anybody. However, I do want to realistically talk about what things could be added to or what existing things could be tweaked to make GarageBand better. I also asked you, yes you, member of the GarageBand community, what features you think should be added to GarageBand for Mac, and blimey, did you have some ideas. Stick around till later in the video where I'll share some of those. First off though, I said I wanted to be realistic. So here are three features that I think will never ever be added to GarageBand for Mac. Yep, yeah, this one's a biggie. A lot of folks suggested buses as something they'd like to see added to GarageBand in the future, but I just don't think it'll ever happen. One of the big pro features that Logic has over GarageBand, it's also one of the main reasons folks make the leap from GarageBand to Logic, if slash when they start to feel held back production-wise. So, I just don't think Apple would ever add this function in any way, shape or form to GarageBand, especially as it may stop users making that jump between the two programs. Know what I mean? GarageBand actually used to include a form of sidechain compression in the form of a Docker function. This feature was removed when GarageBand was completely redesigned back in 2014, much to the dismay of the thousands of podcasters who had been using the DAW to record and edit their podcasts. This is another feature that Apple have made a Logic Pro only feature, unfortunately. FlexPitch is Logic's built-in answer to Auto-Tune. It's a stock pitch correction plugin that works in much the same way as Intares's ubiquitous effect. And look, there's no way that Apple will give GarageBand users more than just a single wee pitch correction slider that's in GarageBand already. They just won't. And besides, there are enough third-party options out there for this one not to hurt too much, really. Check the linky in the dinky for more info on my preferred pitch correction alternative. Those are three features that I don't think will ever see the light of day in GarageBand for Mac. But what about features that I would like to see added and that may be entirely possible? GarageBand on iOS, right? Bear with me a second. Every few months, GarageBand for iOS gets exciting new sound packs with cool custom graphics demos of them in action, and a full-on dedicated interface. Mac users get note. Zilch. Nothing. Not only that, new sound packs are often released 
months later on Mac. Now that isn't just a garage band thing. Logic and Mainstage users have to wait the same length of time for these iOS sound packs to land on Mac. It's all a bit weird, really, especially when you consider that these packs are able to be added to GarageBand for Mac way before they're officially released. That's right, if you import a GarageBand for iOS project onto GarageBand or Logic on your Mac and it contains loops from a sound pack that has been released on iOS but hasn't been released on Mac yet, the entirety of the pack will be downloaded onto your Mac. Why? Why? How hard could it be to release all of these sounds to all platforms simultaneously? I just, I just don't get it. The stock plugins found in GarageBand are poor shadows of the logic cells. Essentially, these stock GarageBand plugins are opening in a restricted controls view. And while plugins like the compressor do the job, kind of, it all just comes off as a bit lazy, really. Old GarageBand stock plugins had simple but unique UIs that made them feel like an intended feature rather than an afterthought. A little bit of TLC needs to be shown to this section of GarageBand's UI, I think. I asked various GarageBand communities around the internet what changes and features they'd like to see in GarageBand for Mac. Here's some highlights. Over on Facebook, Richard says export MIDI. And Jay says MIDI clock out. I swear to God, those Apple probably spent more time and resources keeping it out than it would have cost to keep it. Total dick move in my opinion. Thanks for that, Richard and Jay. You're both completely right. GarageBand handles MIDI terribly when you're trying to export it. I think you're right. I think Apple have deliberately stripped that function out of GarageBand. And while I can understand they want to keep some pro features for Logic, this really harms collaboration more than anything else. I would love to see some form of MIDI export make its way to GarageBand in the future for sure. Willem says stems export. This is another area where GarageBand lacks and I think another area where it harms collaboration. There is no simple straightforward way to export stems from GarageBand if you weren't aware. You have to mute singular tracks and then export them one by one. There is no export as stems feature as you would find in Logic Pro. So yes, definitely something a lot easier than doing tracks one by one would definitely be helpful. Marty says multiple plugin windows open at the same time. This is a feature that used to be present in GarageBand for Mac. I think it was when GarageBand 10 first launched or maybe the first update after it was launched, you were able to open multiple plugin windows at the same time. Apple removed this in a following update, probably I think as a way to reduce processor load, maybe, or maybe they just hate you. I'm kidding, they don't hate you. Yes, this would be a great feature if it was to make its way back into GarageBand at some point. Matthew suggests being able to change time signatures meant project, unless that's one he just hasn't figured out. No, Matthew, it is a feature that doesn't exist in GarageBand for Mac, and one that I think would be fairly easy to implement and I don't think would particularly impact sales of Logic Pro. I get asked how to do this all the time and it always sucks having to tell people that it just can't be done in GarageBand. It's stupid. They should definitely add this, I think. Over on Twitter, Nick aka Moby Pixel says, I think bringing basic crossfade support to GarageBand might be number one on my list. Logic has many other features I'd like to see in GarageBand, like the sampler and improved plugin UIs, but I can accept the idea that those are pro features. If you're unaware, Crossfade allows you to kind of blend one region into another without those nasty, gnarly pops that you may sometimes get if you bring two regions together. It is kind of a basic editing thing really and I think you're absolutely right. I wouldn't say that's necessarily a pro feature 
that needs to be hidden behind the uh, logic paywall, as it were. So yes, it would make sense and I would love to see it added to GarageBand as well. And John Orell says, I do have a whole list, I bet you do John, but right at the top, even if they do nothing else, is to stop loading my last f project every time I start GarageBand. Honestly, John, that's the bane of my life. Why, Apple? Why? If you really want to see any of the features mentioned in this video added to GarageBand, take a second and fill out Apple's official GarageBand feedback form. Yes, that is a thing that exists, believe it or not. I'll leave a link down below so you can check it out for yourself. Grumpy GarageBand for iOS users, check out this video next where I talk about features I'd like to see added to Apple's mobile DAW, as well as some excellent ideas from the GarageBand community. <laughs>